everyone. So today we're just gonna dive right into the video. I have slightly more than 1,000 Canadian dollars worth of eyeshadow in my hands right now. I can even hold it in one hand. Over $1,000 worth of eyeshadow. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you know that money is a huge concern for me right now. Just it's the way that my life has turned. For better or for worse, I am not financially stable. So a lot of my previous behavior has had to change and it was stuff that I was working on anyway, but the last couple of months have been particularly difficult. So as I've been reevaluating my choices and looking at past choices and decisions, choices, we won't say mistakes here, but I, what really caught my eye when I was sort of looking at the makeup that I currently have and just, you know, how much I've spent on makeup over the last couple of years, it really hasn't been a huge number overall. For a time, I was more into quantity. I wanted to have a lot of stuff, but I did go the more expensive route sometimes. And as I was looking at stuff, I couldn't believe that this pile of high-end eyeshadow totaled more than $1,000. It is a Pat McGrath palette. Uh, I have La Vie and Rose. I have a Viseart palette, which is the Editorial Brights palette. I have Natasha Denona Metropolis, Tropic, Lila, Sunset, and Gold. So, these eyeshadows are very expensive and I think they're probably the most expensive, some of the most expensive anyway. They're definitely eyeshadow brands that people are familiar with and people know cost a lot of money. At the time, it made sense to me. I, I, it doesn't really make sense to me now. It's not like I would have that money. I'm sure I would have used it somewhere else. I, by this point, the most recent one I purchased was the Metropolis one which I absolutely didn't need to purchase at all. I justified it to myself when I was away and I kind of already set my mind up that I was going to do it. And I, I wouldn't have that money now, so that's not what I'm talking about. But I was just thinking, seven eyeshadow palettes, $1,000. What else could I have done with $1,000? What else could I do if I had $1,000 besides, you know, the obvious of, of saving it and putting it away, which is probably realistically what I would do if somebody handed me $1,000. You know, what else could I buy? with a thousand dollars. What else could that thousand dollars go to? It could be 250 cups of fairly good coffee. It could be 200 kind of expensive lattes. Not to say that I would like spend all of my money on coffee or caffeine beverages, but just like the way that I was thinking about it based on numbers. It could be 400 cans of energy drinks, which is still along the caffeine lines. I am a little bit of a caffeine junkie. If it's not coffee, I get my caffeine fix somewhere else with 400 cans. That's more than a can a day for a whole year. Right now, I really treat myself to an energy drink like maybe once a month. Maybe if I can if I can swing it usually lately. It's been every couple of months uh, Just because I just it's a luxury that I can't afford and it sounds kind of silly because it's like two cans for five dollars But it's just not part of my budget. I think about the other things I collect besides makeup I mean obviously a thousand dollars could go a long way towards makeup I could buy all of the base products that I've been missing I look at those staple products like the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion, which is $32. Um, MAC Foundation is probably what I would purchase foundation-wise, which is $40, $45 ish, somewhere in that range. I did a price on the Becca face primer, which is my favorite luminous face primer, which has gone up in price. It's now $51. But still, that is not even $150 worth of products for just my simple base makeup. 150 out of the, the $1,000, I could have those base products that I find really work well for me that I've been sort of denying myself of because I can't afford it. I could have money then to get concealer and color corrector and just, just invest in the base kind of products that I like to use on my face if I was going to spend at least even some of that money on makeup. I could spend $1,000 improving my skincare. There's 
a lot of skincare I could buy. And even if I went on the higher end for skincare, 10 items at $100 each, not that I would probably buy all that at one time, but even if I bought a couple of like $100 skincare things, I can't think of anything in particular. I'm just thinking about like if I was gonna upgrade my skincare routine or have a couple of those somewhat pricier skincare items that would be in a constant rotation that I wouldn't have to worry about really saving for special occasions or using sparingly because I would have sort of like a skincare budget. Can you imagine having a thousand dollar skincare budget for the year? That would be amazing. But even some of my favorite skincare items are lower end things. One of my favorite things to, um, to remove my makeup is a micellar water from Garnier. With a thousand dollars, I could buy 112 bottles of that. And right now I'm almost out of my micellar water and I find myself sort of like using it so sparingly and being like, oh no, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I can't buy this. A thousand dollars would give me 112 bottles of that one particular micellar water, which I definitely wouldn't need. I, like a thousand dollar budget for micellar water is ridiculous. That would, that would end up being something like, I don't know, eight years worth of micellar water, but it, it's just those numbers that I've been thinking about a lot that just really make me reevaluate uh, and think differently about my makeup purchases. I know and I wanna keep those thoughts going forward. I thought with a thousand dollars, I could get some skin treatments done. I could go to the spa, which I've never done. I could get a manicure, you know, have my nails professionally done, which I've never done, which I'm sure surprises absolutely no one. But you know, I can do like the mani-pedi thing, which I always thought was absolutely something I would never be able to do, but would actually be incredibly affordable with a thousand dollars. I could do a lot of mani-pedis for that actually. But I could also buy like 90 bottles of OPI nail polish and I haven't bought myself a new bottle of nail polish in many years. I could seek professional treatment for my hair, absolutely. I could potentially afford hair extensions, maybe eyelash extensions, which is something I had considered at one point, just they are very temporary, but you know, so is hair extensions. Uh, I could get my brows done. You know, stuff like that that I always thought, this is absolutely well outside what I'd be able to afford, you know, the whole invest in yourself kind of thing. And I always was like, you know, there's no way I can afford something like that. Like anytime I would look up something like, you know, hair extensions, it would be like, oh, I think one place quoted me at something like $600 and I was like, absolutely not, not happening. And I'm like, I could do that almost twice with the money I spent on seven eyeshadow palettes. Or on the other hand, I could take my wig somewhere and have at least a couple of them professionally styled. I have no idea how much that actually costs, but like I already have the wigs. So I'm sure I could hire a hairstylist to help me with them to make them look more natural. That's something I could definitely do if I had the money to do it. I thought of other things I like to collect and other interests I have. Like I am a huge notebook junkie. I love notebooks, but that's obviously not something I can afford right now. And not that I really need any, but you know, I like very expensive of luxury notebooks and a thousand dollars I could buy quite a few even even at a, like a moderately priced level I could buy like 40 or 50 you know really good notebooks which would be amazing I've, I've even thought of some designer things which is luxury and fantasy and not necessities but just you know things that could be purchased with the money I've long wanted a pair of designer sunglasses. When I was younger, I really wanted a pair of oversized Dior sunglasses. And now I think I'm I'm more into Alexander McQueen. And I was like, oh man, I wish I could afford a pair of designer sunglasses and like just treasure them and wear them forever or as, you know, as long as possible. And I actually did a price check on like my dream pair of designer sunglasses and they're less than 600 Canadian dollars, which really is eye-opening to me because for some reason I, I really priced them much higher and I was thinking more like a designer handbag, which is something that I was like, oh, sometime like I wish I could afford just one, just one designer handbag that would be like my everyday Every day bag and they're like three four thousand dollars ish I think <laughs> not something I've ever done really thorough research on because I know it's not something that I can afford but just something that's one of those fantasy things it's like you know on that sort of ultimate luxury checklist but just thinking that I could almost buy two pairs of designer sunglasses <laughs> for the price of the eyeshadow palettes. It just really puts things into perspective and how some of those things that I felt like was absolutely impossible are things that I, I potentially could have fairly easily budgeted for if I spent the time to think about it. And then I also considered my everyday costs as well. I, I thought a thousand dollars could be almost seven years worth of Netflix. That's something I'm paying for monthly that I use all the time. Seven years of Netflix. 
$1,000 is just slightly less than my monthly rent, which really puts things into perspective. It'd be almost 16 months worth of my internet, which is something that I really rely on. Having a year plus taken care of for my internet would mean everything. It's three months of my car payment. It's about five months of my maximum grocery budget. Again, really eye-opening to think about those numbers and comparing it to what I spent my money on before. It could be travel money. A thousand dollars might seem like it won't go very far, but a thousand dollars gets me a few provinces over. It, it pays for the flight, it pays for a hotel, it pays for a concert ticket. I know this because I did put aside this money a long time ago over the summer because I'm going to a concert next month and that's approximate, that's, it's, well it's actually a lot less than a thousand dollars and I'm sharing some of the costs as well so a thousand dollars could be a trip. Uh, I, I did IMAX before on less than a thousand dollars. That was flight and um, ticket accommodations and spending money. I'm at, which it does involve purchasing makeup, but it's also the experience as well. Sometimes there's travel packages as well that are a little bit more than a thousand dollars, but not that much more. Like if I had saved a thousand dollars and then saved a few hundred dollars on top of that, I could probably do a, a week somewhere that I've always wanted to go to, like a dream lo location, uh, some something that's been sort of on my bucket list, right? And those are the things I've been thinking about that really puts things into perspective that I, I want memories. I don't really have a lot of memories attached to these eyeshadow palettes, like except for the Metropolis palette, which I know uh, is special to me because I purchased it when I took my trip to Cleveland. So that's, that's special to me. But the other ones, like, I don't remember where I bought them exactly when I bought them, uh, I just I just purchased them. Yes, I've used them quite a bit. Yes, I really love using them, but they aren't memories. They, they I don't have a memory attached to a particular piece of colored powder, right? In, in this case, uh, it's just something that I enjoy using. I enjoy using the formula. I connect in most cases like with these particular brands, but they're just product. There's, there's just pro they're just product and there's nothing else that goes along with it. Yeah, buying so much worth of coffee is extreme and usually that's where people tell you to like cut back if you're saving money, which is absolutely true. But I think about how many memories I would have attached to that. If I was going out and buying coffee and I think about how like my boyfriend and I really, before we were dating, connected by going and getting coffee. And one of those things, it's like how many moments did I miss out on or how many moments am I missing out on because of the things that I purchased before and how it's affecting me now that I can't have some of those little experiences that I just can't do these little things and how many things have, have I thought was impossible or just you know completely unrealistic for me that potentially could have been and what would that have looked like for me so I've definitely been thinking a lot about numbers and just thinking about you know where what I could have gotten for this instead of this product or these products or you know, this or that, and it, it is interesting and also kind of overwhelming when you actually sit down with the numbers and you're looking at, you know, almost seven years worth of Netflix and you're like, what the heck? Oh my God. And, and just those different things that you spend money on. Like I don't spend a whole lot of money and I never really did. Like makeup was for quite a few years my biggest hobby because I turned it into that with also YouTube. So I, I made it a hobby and I made it something that I spent more money on that I probably would have in any other reason. And I was very happy doing that in some cases. So I'm not saying like, oh, I regret buying this and I want to get rid of it and I want to, you know, wish I hadn't purchased this. I'm just saying going forward, I will definitely be thinking about that before I make significant purchases because it isn't something that I can afford. I am an everyday person who works an everyday job. It's not nine to five, but it's fairly close to that. You know, I have that sort of structure in my day. YouTube is something I do as a hobby and kind of needs to stay that way. And buying a almost $200 eyeshadow palette doesn't make a whole lot of sense for someone who lives the way that I live. And that's something I'm just trying to constantly remind myself of and be fair to myself over that. And it's like, I'm not criticizing anybody else who spends money like that. Absolutely not. Some people really love to buy the high end expensive makeup products, that high end eyeshadow or lipstick or whatever it is, and all the power to you. For me, it's just not something that I can afford. It's not 
the kind of lifestyle I have. I don't have the paycheck that goes alongside being able to afford those big designer items in any kind of capacity, whether it's eyeshadow or anything else. And I'm just trying to be realistic with myself and I'm also trying to just talk about it more and kind of normalize it because I feel like there's a lot of people who do purchase those high-end things who kind of make it look like it's normal and like anybody can do it. And I feel like I might have been one of those people I can't say for sure because I don't know exactly what it looked like from somebody else's perspective but I know that there was a lot of times like I'm talking about these products, I'm talking about these expensive things, I'm talking about how much I like them, I am feel like sometimes I'm probably pushing them but it's just because I have them and I like them and now I'm just going to be using them and enjoying them but I, I kind of feel like there needs to be that little disclaimer there that not everybody can afford those kind of products and that's okay. You can still do the same kind of looks without the exact same products. You can still be inspired by the brands. You can be inspired by Vizier, by Natasha Denona, by Pat McGrath without having to have their actual products. And I think it's important to remember that. And I think it's important to not compare yourself so much and so intensely to the people who can afford that stuff and who are living a different sort of lifestyle. I think it's good to be inspired by those people and to want to work harder and work more and you know just just be inspired and ha have some sort of like level some sort of goals that you might want to reach sometime but just it's not practical or realistic for every person. I think it's good to be inspired and motivated and want to invest in yourself and invest in your hobbies and your career and whatever else it may be but you might not ever reach that same level so that's one thing that i've been trying to just remain aware of and cautious of and just talk about more anyway that's all i really wanted to talk about in this video these expensive eyeshadow palettes and what you could purchase for that sort of exact same money without or what I could purchase. Anyway, I would really love to hear from you. What would you do with a thousand dollars? I'm just really curious what other people would do with that money and maybe there's something else that I'm not thinking about. Maybe there's other goals and things that people have that might inspire me. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And let me know if you happen to have any video suggestions, ideas, recommendations, anything that you would like to see, please, please do let me know. Thank you so much once again. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I hope we get a chance to chat soon. Bye for now.